let me try to lay down the ideas as clearly and simply as possible. Um, suppose you were going to go out for a jog on a, on a slope like this, on a hill. Uh, the question is, uh, how many different types of hills are there? Um, and the answer is, there are infinite many. Some of them are very, very steep, and other ones are not so steep. Other ones are really, really uh, not that steep. Um, for example, this one is almost steepless. Uh, some of them are even downhill. Um, if you're like me, you probably want to jog on a really, really steep one like this, like I do every day, five miles uh, uphill. Um, but anyways, uh, so, so today we're talking about steepness. And, and the idea is uh, we want to... Um, we want to be able to put an actual number on the steepness. Just saying that it's steep is not good enough. We want to say it's really, really steep, or it's not that steep, or it's downhill. Well, even that's not that good. We actually want to put a number on it to say, hey, it's exactly this steep. So so for every single type of steepness, we want to have uh, an actual number associated with that. Um, for that, we, we have what we've... Uh, it's popular. Um, people have invented this name for the number that represents the steepness is called the slope. Uh, so for, for us, a slope will be equal to uh, a number that uh, measures that measures uh, steepness. You might have seen these uh, when you're driving down the highway, some of the times you'll say 6% uh, grade or 10% grade. It's something like that. Or if you're a house builder, sometimes you um, look at the roofs of the houses and they have a certain pitch uh, the house builders call it um, pitch the people driving the road call it grade uh, we call it uh, steepness or we call it slope slope is a number that measures the steepness okay what we want to do is a couple of things we first we want to define clearly what is the slope uh, in fact um, I can do that just about now uh, and then the next thing I'll, I'll do is practice the, the slope so, so first thing we do is, is we define the slope. The slope is defined to be, uh, you pick any two points on the line, say, say this point and say some other point, it doesn't matter which one. And what you do is you measure, you measure uh, this distance and you call this the run or the, the change in X. This little funky triangle here is often called change or Greek letter delta, capital D, delta. Um, and this one over here is sometimes called uh, delta y or, or the rise or the change in y. These are all different names that, that we use to, to identify this distance. So, so the way we will define the steepness is, hey, we will measure the ratio of how much you have to go up versus how much you have to run. So, so by, by definition, the slope is, uh, by the way, it's often the letter that we use to, def to refer to slope is m. And we will define slope... Uh, usually calling it M as the change in Y over change of X or sometimes people call it the rise over the run that my friends that's the definition of of a uh, slope um, here now what we have to do is maybe measure a whole bunch of slopes practice measuring slopes and second thing is maybe um, pay special attention to very very special slopes Okay, that, that's the plan. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example. Um, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to find the slope. And we uh, note that earlier we defined slope as the rise over the run. Change in Y over change of X. So to measure the change in Y or change of X, I designed these uh, amazingly powerful and deep instruments called the uh, measure I call this measuring lines uh, and I'm just going to measure the number of squares that that are there that's the rice and I'll, I'll put that number um, on the bottom here and then and then I'm going to take my my vertical uh, measuring uh, device that's this one over here and uh, um, we we will measure the the vertical distance and then and then we'll be on our on our way. Let me see if we can move this one over here. Let's move it. Uh, let's not move it that way. Let's see if we can move it. Uh, control G to group it. All right, there we go. Should work now. 
Okay, so here we go. So I'll measure it, say, uh, maybe right around here. Perfect. That that will do it right there. So here, here's how I'm going to measure it. I go this way, it's uh, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the run is 13 units. Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is the change of X or the run. Uh, run 13 and rice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the change of Y is equal to 5. So, so that means for every 13 steps you take forward, you got to climb up 5 steps. Or if you were driving for every 13 miles that you have drive that way, you've elevated yourself 5 miles, etc., etc. So for this one, the slope is um, 5 over 13. Just like that. Now, suppose you were to make this... Uh, let's start over with a, with a separate line or... or um, let me see. Suppose we started over with another line, and suppose this line over here is is a. Uh, let's make it more steep or less steep. Let's make it uh, uh, less steep. Okay. So suppose you had a line like that, and you wanted to measure the steepness on that one. Uh, again, what you would do is you take your vertical measure here, and find a point where that fits evenly, so that you don't you're not, you don't have to approximate too much kind of like that point right there okay and, and then you just start counting um, you count uh, rise over run so you count 5, 10, 15 the, the run is 15 and the rise is uh, 2 this is the change of y this is the change of x so therefore the slope for this line is not as steep as the other one this one's on 2 over 15 that, that would be the slope on this one it's always rise over run. That, that's all it is. It's just a ratio of uh, change of y over, over change of x. And, and notice that these uphill ones, the lower the hill or the less steep, the smaller the number. Um, you, you could uh, look at this one and, and then uh, if you were to lower it down to here, now that steepness uh, would, would no longer be, be 2. Um, this steepness would be uh, equal to uh, this change would be 1, and so you'd have to uh, abandon this one and say that that one is uh, half as steep. That one is just uh, 1 over 15. See that? This is a 1, 1 over 15. And, and then you wonder, well, what, what happens if, say, uh, you had uh, a negative slope? Say you had something like, like that. How would you measure the steepness on that one? Chew on that. Well, again, we would take our measuring devices... Let's, uh, let's see about this. Okay, so let's do it. Talk is cheap. Uh, this one's kind of uh, steeper, so you would expect the number to be higher. Um, what we do is you, you pick any point that goes right through the line here. Anything that's convenient to measure so that you don't have to approximate these things. Maybe just that point right there seems fair enough. So, so what you do is you pick a couple points on the line. It doesn't matter which one. Say uh, I go with this one and say I, I go with this one right here. Now uh, the slope is defined to be the uh, rise um, rise over run. So let's figure out the rise. Uh, it go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's equal to 11. And the run would be 5, 6, 7, 8. So therefore the slope here for, for this line would be equal to 11 over 8. Or um, a little more than one, um, which means every time you drive over or take eight units that way, you move up 11 units. Okay, easy enough, right? Let's practice that about a thousand more times. What about this one? Would you expect it to be bigger or smaller than the other one? You would expect this slope to be bigger because it, the line is much steeper. So, so we go on with the uh, tradition of noting that talk is cheap, and let's actually measure it. Uh, let's say I go anything that fits nice I will take that one seems to fit nice let's go with that one so so we pick a couple points on line that point and that point and, and once you pick a couple of spots on there all you do is measure rise, rise over run let's look at the rise first change of y would be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 is a rise 1 2 3 is a run uh, the change in x so therefore our Famous slope would be change of y over 
change of x which would be 10 over 3. See how easy that is? I make this stuff look easy, that's why they pay me. Uh, and, and, then, and then let's do that about a thousand more times. What about, uh, say, um, this one? Whoa, 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 whoa. This one's not very steep at all. The line is actually pretty flat, so uh, you can go ahead and try to measure it if you want, but uh, uh, it's not going to measure, it's not going to amount to much. Uh, pick any point that fits on there perfectly, say like this one, uh, and then you measure. All right, let's measure. Uh, change of x, change of x, you went uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10. Change of y is 0. Therefore, the slope is equal to change of y over change of x. 10, 0 over 10, which is equal to 0. This is incredibly famous. This is one of the most famous slopes. It's telling you that uh, the steepness is 0. There is no steepness here. Nada. 0, 0, 0. So, so this is called uh, slope zero famous. It's a horizontal line. Um, okay, the, now let's 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 take it uh, a step further. What if you had something like this that was going downhill? Well, no problem. We can have that too. Uh, we want to take our little excellent measure and just measure. Uh, we got to find something that fits on there nicely. That one doesn't fit. We move it over. Whoa! I think that fits. No. Actually, it doesn't matter. Any anywhere where it fits, um, you can do it. I'm just going to keep going until I can get it to one. Nope. Till I can get it to one. I think that's going to do it right there. That fits pretty well. So I'm going to go with that. I'll pick uh, uh, the couple points, that point and this point, and I'll measure the run and the rise. The rise is actually not a rise, but a fall, but people still call it a rise. The rise is negative 1, because you went down 1. Okay, these slopes measure signs as well. Up is positive, down is, is negative, so that's negative 1. And how many did you run? So you run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so the change of x is 6, the change of y is 1. Rise over run. Slope is equal to rise over run negative one over six and that's it you've done it you've done it first negative slope so here's the first another thing important thing to note the the lines that are going uphill as you read from left to right those will be positive slopes the lines that are flat those will be zero slopes the lines that are going downhill as you move from left to right downhill means uh, you'll, you'll have a negative slope uh, capiche run six rise negative two rise over run negative one over six all right, let's take something that's a little bit uh, more uh, on the negative side and, and see how that pans out. Um, again, the idea is to try to fit uh, this one nicely. I'll fit it right where it fits. That's close enough. Sometimes you have to approximate because uh, it doesn't cross right at the, at the marks. So sometimes you actually have to approximate, but we'll call that close enough. Um, and, and so you may mark a couple points here and notice that we're just approximated, but that's good enough for now. And so all you do is count the ri rise over the run. Let me see, rise would be three. You went uh, over here and you went down three, so it would be negative three. That's the rise, the change of y, negative three. The run would be five, six, seven, eight. The change of x is eight. So you run eight and you fall three. That makes our famous slope uh, negative 3 over 8. Rise over run. I told you. So simple. I could do this with my left hand. Rise over run. Okay, uh, something, let's take something really, really negative like this one. Oh my goodness. Uh, can't be that hard. All you do is put this guy up to it and see how it measures up. I want it to fit nice and go right through the... Uh, corners there. If it doesn't, then I gotta pick another point. Right there, we're gonna call that close enough. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll go through this point and through that point. And I wanna measure rise over run. Let's do the rise first 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Positive or negative? Well, if you go to the right and then down, that would be negative. Okay. And, um, 
the run, that would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. 9 to the right, 15 down. Then the famous slope would be rise over run. Just like that. You could simplify if you want. Simplifying is for the birds. And in actual practice or on the homework or almost in every single textbook in the world, they don't do it this way because nobody has these excellent little measuring things that uh, that uh, we came up with here. What The way it's mostly done in the real world is they give you actually a grid kind of like this and they give you a line that's already on there. And from there you're supposed to pick a couple points that go right through the corners. Uh, for example, that point right there is not not my best choice. Let me see if I can zoom you in there. Can you see it? Hold on, it's out of focus. Let me see if I can focus you. That's a little better. Okay. So this point right here would not be my first choice because it doesn't go through one of the corners so I'd have to estimate is it a half or a third or some portion of this number. So I want to go with ones that go through corners. So for example, this one would be a nice one because I can approximate it's roughly going through that corner right there and then I, I scan ta -ta 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 till I find another nice corner say like this one and that's good enough. These will be my points and then I actually have to make up my own drawing here where I make a triangle out of it so I can count the rise or, or the run. So then I just count uh, the run. One, two, three, four. Four, that's the run and then one, two, three, down three. So I went over to the right four, down three. So therefore uh, my slope for this one would be equal to see if I give you rise over run negative three all over four just like that this is the way it's typically done um, you know you get a, a grid like this and then you just figure out a couple points and then measure it uh, let's try that one more time again notice the negative number here negative slopes always go downhill let me say that one more time negative slopes always go downhill as you reach from left to right um, and this one right here before you even look at it you should know you're gonna get a positive slope because it's going uphill from left to right. So the trick is to figure out a couple points that go right through them. Doesn't matter which ones. Let's just go with uh, that one and that one right there. It's close enough. And then you just measure the run and the rise. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness, Diego's crying again. Hold on. Okay, I talked to him. He said it's cool till I finish doing the video, he'll start crying again. All right, um, so the slope is equal to uh, rise over run, four over six, which by the way, you, you, you could simplify. Simplifies for the birds, but I guess you, you could if you wanted to. And this points out a different fact. Had we picked this point right here, for example, these two points, the rise would have been two and the run would have been three. 3, 2. That, that, that would have given you the 2 thirds. So either way you're, you're okay. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter which points you choose. It's the ratio that matters. How many you rise every time you run so many. Okay. So a nice really little example. 2 thirds, same thing as 4 6. Telling you this slope is the same thing as the slope. The steepness on this line from this point to that point is the same as the steepness on this line from this point to that point. Because it's the same line so of course you should have the same steepness. Okay, uh, again, I want to emphasize the most famous slopes of them all. This is incredibly steep. This is so steep, uh, there is no real number to measure the steepness. This is uh, as steep as it gets. And we say that the, here, in this case, if you try to, to pick a couple of points, you get uh, uh, 3 over 0, which is not, not uh, a real number. So this is the only slope where it's a vertical line that does not have a real number to measure how steep it is. The numbers are not, the real numbers are not enough to measure the steepness. This is infinitely steep. And so we say, some people say there's no slope or some people say the slope is not real. Other people say the slope is infinite. Okay. Contrast that with the following slope. This one, everybody knows this one. This one has steepness is zero. It's really really famous. Steepness is zero in this case. Steepness zero, steepness infinite. Steepness zero, steepness infinite, steepness zero, steep... Okay, enough. Alright, um, 
Yeah, that's good. So, so every time you look at a line, you should be able to measure the steepness, right? Just by taking a, a couple of these measuring devices and measuring. Or if it's on a on a grid, you should be able to just find, figure out a couple points. Yada 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 yada. Okay, the next thing we should talk about is is maybe uh, what happens when um, when they don't give you the picture. What if all they give you is a couple coordinates on on the line? So suppose someone just gives you a couple coordinates, it's 3, 2, and 5, 7, and they tell you, hey, I've got a line uh, over there somewhere, and the line goes through those points. Can you find the slope for me? Uh, that's the name of the question. Can we find the slope of the line that goes through these two points? One, one silly way to do it would be to actually go back to what we know, is put them on the grid. For example, I take the point 3, 2, and I locate the point 3, 2 on the grid. That would be over 3 and up 2. That would be right here. And then I take the point uh, 5, 7. That's this one, 5, 7, and I put it on the grid as well. 5, 7 would be over 5, up 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the point 5, 7. This is the point 3, 2. And then I go back to whatever we were doing before, we measure the rise over the run. The run would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The rise, uh, that's the rise, and the run would be uh, 2. So therefore, the slope is equal to 5 over 2. That, that would be acceptable. Uh, that's the correct answer. The, the uh, slope is 5 over 2. H however, sometimes you, you may not even need this picture. All you had to do was really l look at the difference of the y's, the, look at the coordinates, set the coordinates on the y, forget about the x's here, and just focus on the y's. The y went from 2 to 7, from 2 to 7. So, so we could have just said, you know what, the change of y is, is 7 minus 2. And then you forget about the, x, the y's and you try to figure out the run. The run would be the difference between the x's. So it would be the 5, just ignore him. He'll be alright. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Do you guys remember when happiness was so simple? Here's how simple happiness could be. You take a little honey lemon drop and Diego is as happy as he could be. Look at that. Tiny little hands. So simple. Just a little cough drop is all it takes. Ain't that right, Diego? Hmm. Give me one of those. Want some music, Diego? Yeah? Hmm. Cool, huh? Alright. So, I was saying, um, the, um, sometimes you don't even have to go through this song and dance. All you do is look at the coordinates and think about it. From the coordinates alone, you can calculate the rise over the run. Let's do that one more time. Suppose the coordinates were uh, 2, 1, and uh, 10, um, 20. Okay? Here's how you can calculate the slope. You, you think to yourself, it's the rise over the run. Here's how I'm going to calculate the rise. The rice would be the difference of the y's, the 20 minus the 1. The 20 minus the 1. That would be the rice. And then for the run, I'm going to look at the x coordinates. The x coordinates give me 10 and 2. So it would be 10 minus 2. And actually, it doesn't matter which one you put where. Um, it would work out exactly the same way at the end. Uh, this will give you 19 over 8. If you don't believe me, watch this. You go 1 minus 20 all over 2 minus 10. That would give you negative 19 over negative 8, which is the same thing as 19 over 8 after you simplify. I told you. This method is so simple and so consistent. It works all the time, forever. Even if some of these numbers are negative, it doesn't matter. Um, you could have, you could have, you could have, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You could have one of the points be potato, comma, hair, and the other point be uh, K, comma, chair. And still, the slope would be 
I will look at the Y coordinates, the slope would be, uh, I'll take the, I'll do the right minus the left, I'll do uh, the chair minus the hair over, then I'll cover up the Y's and just look at the X's, the K minus the potato, just like that. Every single time, the only difference, the only, the only exception to this is when your slope is not a real number, meaning when you have a zero on the bottom. That's the only case that you have to deal with separately. All, every other time you can always always play this game. So simple and pure and forever consistent. Watch this. Suppose you have a point that goes through negative 3, negative 10, comma, and positive 4, negative 5. I don't care. The slope is as easy as one line away. Difference of y's. So I cover up the 3 and the 4, cover up the x's, so it's negative 5 minus negative 10. Then I cover up the y's and do look at the x's. 4 minus a negative 3. Now if that doesn't work for you, you should always go back to your, your graph here and graph them and just count little squares. But this should always, always work out. In the end, this will be negative 5 plus 10, that gives you positive 5, because this is negative, negative, that gives you positive. This gives you positive as well, It'll be pos positive 7. And that's it. As easy as it sounds, that's all you gotta do. And then here comes the music. And you know what that means. I got a bucket, got a bucket full of sunshine. I got a love and I know that it's all mine. Oh, oh, oh. Messy candy. Look at that. You wish that you could, but you ain't gonna all me do anything you can to control Peace. me. Oh.